Boy, in Psalms 25, we're going to learn some great lessons from David about some of the major principles of the gospel. Now, verse 1, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let, uh, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness. For they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth nor my transgressions, according to thy mercy, remember me, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. So this is getting into a lot of discussion of, of gospel teachings, teaching people, teaching the sinners in the way helping them to understand the error of their ways and improve. That is repentance. Okay, Repentance is a really important thing for us to always understand. That repentance is not about justice. It's not. Repentance is about mercy. Justice is about justice. Justice will take care of itself. Repentance is about mercy. It is about God giving us mercy. So we have to always remember that repentance is not a bad thing process. I think a lot of people look at repentance as if it is a bad process. It's not. Repentance is a good process. It actually is a gift from God. It is saying, yes, we understand you screwed up, but we're going to give you another chance. We are going to forgive you and allow you to start over and move forward. How great is that? How wonderful it is that God is willing to help us and to bless us. Repentance is a process of change. Repentance is important. Elder Bednar uh, gave a talk not too long ago where he talked about if you don't like change, then you are in the wrong church. This church, this gospel is all about change. And said the reason he said that is because the point of the gospel is to help us to go from a what's called a natural man or a more inherently wicked state or a, a state of willing to do things that are against the commandments of God changing you to a state of following God and understanding the ways of God. So we move from a more natural man, wicked state to a more spiritual state, preparing us for this next life. So change is just a major part of the gospel. And repentance is a key principle in understanding how we change, how we improve. If we never changed, we would most likely be condemned because of sin. We need to be willing to change. And that opportunity to change is a great blessing God has given us. It's really wonderful. Now verse 10, all the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Again, all the paths of the Lord, the point of the gospel is mercy and truth. It is a help and a, and a kindness to those who want to keep his commandments. If you don't want to keep his commandments, you don't have to. But that does mean you've got to live with your own problems. If you follow God, he will help you with your problems and take your burdens off of you, which is a good thing. Uh, let's see, verse 11, For my name's sake, O Lord, pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. If you remember, the Savior talks about who inherits the earth in the Beatitudes. His seed is the meek, the lowly of heart, the broken heart and contrite spirit. That's who inherits the earth. Uh, verse 14, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Now, we don't fear God out of fear fear of retribution against us. We fear God because we reverence him. We don't want to make him mad. We want to keep his commandments and do what's right. Again, not because we're afraid of punishment, but because we're afraid of offending him. We want 
to keep his commandments. It's, it's not a compelling thing. The gospel doesn't compel us. The gospel allows us to choose. And if we choose to follow God, we will fear God, not in a negative way, but we will be afraid to basically offend him because we want to be in his good graces. Uh, verse 15, mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. This is a really interesting phrase in there of this net. Uh, the fishermen, when they would go fishing, it wasn't with a rod and reel trying to cast and bring in fish. They would throw a net. Part of the net would sink to the bottom, and then they would have ropes. They would pull that up, drag it up, and you get caught in the nets. The gills of the fish would get caught in the net. The fish would be too big to swim through the holes in the net, and they'd get caught in it, and then that's how they would bring up the fish. That's a more efficient way to catch a lot of fish in a short period of time. Uh, and so it's interesting that they talk about this. He shall pluck my feet out of the net. So I am caught in the net of sin. Christ will help me free. He will free me from the traps of sin. Verse 16, turn thee unto me and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Oh, bring thou me out of my distress. This is, I like this because if you think about that uh, story of Peter, when he was walking on the water and then lost his faith and fell in, there's that famous uh, recent painting showing Christ's hand going into the water. You can almost imagine Peter thinking these same ways of, I'm caught, I'm drowning, I'm stuck, I need help. And the Savior reaches into the water, into the problem, and pulls us out of the problem, basically. Really cool. Let's see. Uh, verse 18, look upon my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. Consider mine enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Remember Israel, O oh God, out of all his troubles. So what a great, uh, some great observations and learnings we get from King David today in this book of Psalms. Such a, such a wonderful opportunity to learn more about the gospel. So I look forward to your comments. What do you think about this psalm? What we learn about this and how we see Christ helping us and blessing us in our life. Look forward to reading those comments with you. So let's jump over to the next chapter as we continue on.